Hi, I'm Hannah, and welcome to the A16Z podcast. The phrase personal brand is something of a cliche, but we all know we're supposed to have one. So what does it really mean, and how do you go about actually creating one? In this episode, A16Z's Margaret Venemachers and Alex Constantinople, CEO of the Outcast Agency, both break it down into basics and also give us a sense of nuance on how best to think of a personal brand. This podcast was recorded as part of the Breakline Tech Program for Military Veterans. So I just thought we would start with a really basic question just to lay a little groundwork, which is what do you think a personal brand actually is? How, do you, how would you define it? I think in a nutshell, it's basically what people think or say about you when you're not in the room. <laughs> That's how you should think about with your brand. What is, what is your reputation? What is the association that you occupy in someone's mind. And so that's, that's in a nutshell what it is. If you think of um, companies are easier than people. If you think of Apple, you probably think of design and elegant products. If you think of Virgin, you probably think of irreverent and fun. Like those are the, that, those are the brand attributes that you think of, not even consciously necessarily. And that really what defines a brand. Yeah, I mean, the good news is just being conscious about it actually will help you. So I think... While it is a huge part of what others say about you, I do think it's what you choose to put it out into the world as much and is actually more important. So let's say we're you're starting totally from scratch. You you know who you are, you know what you've done, you know what your resume says, but how do you go about step one defining what your personal brand is? What we usually do is we'll have an executive come in and really just do a whiteboard session. Uh, and we really start with, if I talk to your neighbor, if I talk to your to your parents or your partners or your best friends or your coworkers, what would they say about you? We find that's an easier entry point than if I say, give me adjectives, it feels weird. Like I am the smartest, the prettiest, <laughs> the fabulous. Like it's harder to get it out of people because it's just, it's awkward, right? To be like, this is who I am. But this is how we usually just really start. And then the next question, the most important one probably is you're thinking um, for yourselves is also what kind of leader am I? What, what is it? that I want to put out into the world and have people see how do I want to, to be. And this can be aspirational, all of this, by the way. It might not be who you are today. You might be like, you know what, I've gotten feedback. I mean, my 360s that I've gotten from my GE path to now are hilariously the same. It's sad. I'm not happy about it. But there are some feedback points in there that I'm like, I can't get rid of that. You know, and so I think being conscious about it, like how, what are some of those things that the way I lead that I want to, to be seen and then how do I get there, which is part B of this. And then really your expertise is, is a big part. How do you want to be seen out in the world? This is where more if you've heard the phrase thought leadership, when you're out more in the external world, what do you want to be known for? What are you really, really good at? What can you own as an expert? I mean, that can be subject matter. It can be super broad or very, very narrow and all of the above. And then the last for a personal brand, I think, is really everything about you. Because you can't leave, I find, um, you can't leave your, your personal stuff at home. You can't leave that you might love the outdoors and you're more at adventure. It helps round out the picture. You love to read. You love to be with your family. Like, that is you. And if you come to a job, I find, without your full self, you can't add the most value. And so we don't leave that off as soft stuff. It's really important that you... You are authentically you. Well, another way of getting at this is thinking about story. When you're saying all that, I'm thinking like, well, that's so much information. Yes. I mean, how do you know what the story is that pulls it all together? What's a good way but of I thinking think about that? That's um, to Alex's point earlier. That is where you have a fair amount of control, right? Like what what are the anecdotes that you want to share, right? Mm -hmm. Like what's what's the part in your childhood that shaped you, that made you join forces or that made you the leader that you are. Right? Like you, you can control all of those anecdotes. If you think of like a very carefully crafted brand, whatever you think of the person or not, is um, this woman, Sheryl Sandberg, you all know who she is, right? Well, if you hear her speak or if you read her book or if you see her on TV, there is always a story about when they were kids, she was managing her siblings, right? She put that out there, right? So a good way to get at what your version could be is if you read, take any of your favorite magazine and read a personal profile that someone has written about a business leader is probably the most relevant example or an athlete or whatever. And sort of look at, OK, what would my version of that be? Right. Like, wh how would I fill out paragraph one, three, seven? Right. Like, and you see, once you dissect an article, it becomes not as black box voodoo ish as it seems when you when you first think about brand. Right. You go like, oh, 
They have their family interests. They have their childhood experience. They have their expertise. They have like, and you can deconstruct the story. And then if you take one of those articles and go like, okay, if I had to write a story about me or if you, I wanted a story written about me, what would be in that story? And that gives you a control over what it is and also helps you build the body of how you talk about yourself. So are there things, though, that you think universally make a good story, you know, that that you look for when you're helping people do this, characteristics that you say that? So I think it depends. Like, we haven't even talked about, like, we've talked about what is your brand? How do you want to describe yourself? We haven't talked about, like, how you put it out in the right. world, mm-hmm. right? So that that's a whole... Which we want to come to next. <laughs> which, which, we, which we want to come to. But when you think of stories that other people tell about you, like a magazine article or something... They always want some tension. And that's fine as long as I think there's a happy ending at the end, right? (laughs) And tension can be anything from uh, a tough childhood or a a really tough mission to the extent that you can talk about it or, you know, what countries were you deployed in, whatnot, right? But, like, they all want some tension. They want want the reader to go along and go like, okay, I want to read the next thing, right? It can't just be like, here's my picture-perfect resume and, like, yay. Nobody yeah. wants to read that, right? Like, we don't even want to read that. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, like, if there are lessons learned, people really like, yes. what have what can you bring to somebody else? And and so it, I, lo- I love who, people who put themselves out there and are a little more vulnerable. I, and I think I know that is hard. So being able to say, I tried this, or this was something I did that didn't work, but I learned X from this, I think is a, is a great way to think about that particular tension. Yes. Last night I was reading your profiles and I was like, one, we shouldn't be talking. You should be talking. Exactly. But there are great stories in there, right? Like one of you tried to land one of those planes and it didn't quite work out. Raise your hand if you tried to land a plane and it didn't work. Okay. (laughs) That's amazing. (laughs) You're here, right? But I was reading that and like, look, it stuck with me. So there are amazing stories. I thought these profiles were really, really interesting to read. And there's a lot of good stuff in there where I thought like, oh my God, they have a lot to work with. And also thank you for all the stuff that you've done. Yeah. So maybe this is totally obvious, but does everybody need a personal brand? Yes. Then? <laughs> yeah. Soapbox moments. Sorry. I mean, even if you're interested in a job where, say, you don't want to put your opinions out there that much. No, I do this with college graduates. I do this. Yes. Anybody who needs to to tell, you know, to, to be, you're going out into the world doing something, I feel if like you should. you have interactions with people, <laughs> you need to think about this. Yeah. And it's, if you think of the startup world here in Silicon Valley, most of them, they languish in obscurity. You do want to stand for something. You want to be remember. You want to be remembered for something. You know, as much as there are a gazillion jobs out here, right? Like everybody needs to go. Like, okay, I want this person because they struck me as such, such, and such, and such. And a brand doesn't have. It doesn't mean fame. I think people mm. confuse brand with fame. If you have a powerful brand with the right twenty people, that may be it. Yeah, that's but exactly it doesn't, right. doesn't have to be fame. It's not like. You don't have to be on CNN or whatever. Like, no one, no one's saying that. But you just want to have a deliberate way of thinking about, like, okay, why, how do I want people to think of me? I wish there was another name for it. I think, especially here in the Valley, personal brand, I found it was when I, I spent the majority of my uh, time in New York and D.C. before I came out here. And personal brand, there was, it was no big deal. Here, mm-hmm. it's sort of like, oh, I don't want one of those. Like, that sounds too much for me. The personal Smart. brand, yeah, can turn people off because they, certainly if they came up through the technology and the engineering side, it's very uncomfortable. It's like, I don't want to be, I only do, go out there, only do my fortune story they or whatever. Like they're lying. If it's good for the company, yeah. but I'm really not interested. And they're kind of missing the point because to Margaret's point, it's not necessarily that the next step, which can be for people, then what's the communications plan against your personal brand? Um, and that can be, okay, start talking at these places and giving these kinds of speeches and let's work toward, you know, this kind of profile and this kind of publication that will help your business grow. But I think for purposes of just any executive, and I've literally done them for professors, for, you know, scientists, people who you wouldn't think this would be, but it really can work with anybody because it's just a way to frame your activities. What we also say to a lot of executives, no matter what level, it really also helps you as a filter for your time. If the activities you're doing, and you're going to get asked to do a lot of things, right? If it doesn't necessarily fit within what you've laid out for yourself, 
then I think it's easier to say no. It's like right now I'm focused on on this. You know, obviously everyone has a favor for a friend that they'll do, but I think it will help you focus and and save you time. So that's another really practical reason that we try to put this down. Now, it doesn't mean it won't evolve over time. You can look at it again in five years time and two years time and a year and say, okay, now that I've been doing this. Achieve that. Yeah, <laughs> it, is this good? Is this, does this feel right? Because I think we do want to push ourselves all to be aspirational. The other side of the coin is like, Brand happens to you, mm. yep. whether you want to or not. Like, people will describe you in their head. So would you rather have some say in what that is? Or do you just want it to kind of let it happen, <laughs> right? So it, it just happened. I mean, think of business executives that you admire or hate or whatever. Like, you have opinions about them, right? And so would you rather shape how people perceive you and have it be true to yourself and what you want it to be or just have it happen, right? So... Just take control. Like you Are there do, some examples of people that you think maybe that I, – I like that you distinguish between fame and brand that yes. you think maybe are not on the famous side but did such a good job of telling their story and establishing a brand? You mentioned Virgin already. I think Richard Branson. Yeah, I do think he's done quite a good job of he, his, his – the companies he's built and – absolutely are from him. You don't feel a disconnect. Mm -hmm. He doesn't say things that then don't show up in his companies. And so By the way, it's the only business I think that has a brand that's consistent across very different yes, businesses. Yes, he's a horizontal growth. So it's like, you know, mobile to hotels to airlines to Trains, you know, everything. yeah, it's crazy. Um, and but but it's that thread through works, and then the way he jumps out of planes and you know doesn't have insurance or whatever the hell like <laughs> seems to work. It's for, so you know, it absolutely <laughs> works. It absolutely works. Yeah. Another person I think who's done consistently a good job of their brand is uh, Warren Buffett. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's oh, just he's very totally authentic. Him. He's got that folksy style, but he's also smart. You know, he shows up consistently. And I think he's done a really lovely job of managing his brand. And I, I'm not even sure he's consciously doing it. Maybe he's just lucky and, and gifted. Um, sometimes people are more gifted than others. Another person who hasn't actually doesn't even tell her story, but I think has done a good job, is Angela Merkel over in, mm, in Germany. Yeah. I think she's just like no nonsense, right? It's not a flashy brand. It's It's not a you know, let me use my feminine charm brand at all. It's it's just like, you know, walks she is the line. Who she, is. He, she is who she is. And she's just like, boom, yeah. she keeps marching, right? So I think that, uh, she's done a good job. And then the example of someone whose brand has changed a lot for the better would be Bill Gates. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, some of you are too young, but like he was just particularly in Silicon Valley, but I think widely hate it because of their hardcore business behavior. And now he is like one of the most admired, and rightly so, one of the most admired human beings. Now it's easy when you have that much money to throw at the problem. <laughs> but still, a lot of people have quite a bit of money and don't bother to try and improve the world. So I think, I think he's done That's a, really a good one. Good. That makes me think of, you mentioned authenticity and like the role that authenticity plays in it. I mean, how do you avoid feeling overproduced or over... Well, I think it starts with if you're trying to portray something that you truly are not. If So let's just say you are hardcore competitive, then don't try and make your brand be like I'm a little puppy dog, right? It's just like not going to work. Just own who you are, right? Uh, and I'm sure there's an okay version of who you are and, and own that, right? So that's step one mm -hmm. in authenticity. And then Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat and whatever else there is, that they just demand authenticity because it's so easily detectable if it's someone else doing the writing or if these photos are too curated. From a content point of view, make it who you are. Like everybody has features and bugs in Silicon Valley parlance, right? Like I have a lot of bugs, but you've got to find the place where the features are valued, right? And you're going to be successful in those jobs and not in others, right? Yeah. So, okay. So let's talk about logistics a little bit. Yeah. So, and platforms. You've made your list of adjectives. You know, you've figured out, you've sort of, how do you actually go about getting it out there? And like, are all platforms, you have to be on all <laughs> platforms all the time and well, that's a, I mean, that, that's an entire book of a conversation. But to start with, like, let's assume you've done not just the, the adjectives, but also like, here's my story, right? Here's sort of, here's the biography that is not sort of your official resume that you send out in the world. I would start with, if, if it's something you love, if you've done a lot of speaking as part of your work, if it's something you love, like go to town, try to get the TED Talk. But don't try to get the TED Talk if it's not something you really love, because the worst thing that you can do is just sort of do a very high profile thing 
and then just fail at it miserably. A, it feels like it doesn't feel good. And then B, it just doesn't do you any favor. So I would start, if it's not something that's totally natural to you, I would start with something really small and comfortable. I don't know. It could be your alumni newsletter. It, it could be, you know, it could be very, very small. And then the other thing I would say is not every medium is for everyone. So I'll, I'll use Mark Andreessen as an example. Like if I do a Q&A, he's brilliant. He's just very good at the repartee, the question and answers, being quick on your feet, getting to the heart of the matter, and then he talks fast and the whole thing works, right? Just find what you are. If you, if you are good at speaking, speak. If you're good at writing, write. Now, if you're good at speaking, you still need to write because you want to make sure that what you say is like really deliberate and, and whatnot. But like everybody is different. There are things like LinkedIn and Medium, right, where you can share things like uh, what Alex was saying, like lessons learned or, or tips or, you know, like those kinds of things. Then obviously there's, there's press, which is the least controllable because whatever you say, it goes through their filter and like they end up what gets used and how and all of that. So I'm sure you know the pitfalls. But it also is in some ways the most credible because it's not just you doing your own talking. But it, a third party, they have their readership and whatnot. But there are all kinds of options. I will bring it back to, in case you, that none of that is where you are, right? right? It's actually within a job. It's what activities are you doing and what are those? Are you doing the kind of work that you want to be doing? Are there projects that you want to be on? I think there's also ways to use this for your advantage within a company um, or within your environment. And maybe it is more, you know, a community advocate as well on the side. And then what are you doing to do that, right? You know, do you want to sign up for something? Do you want to participate in a nonprofit? Like what, whatever those other things are, that also can be included. So I think there's a quieter way also to think about the execution of a personal brand exercise that, that can be how do you show up wherever you are? Just to add another thing, it can, it can also be like maybe you want to create your own personal network. Let's say you're here, you have a job. It could be just like you corral a bunch of people and you have dinners. It shapes, as Alex yeah. is put it, saying so eloquently, it shapes your activities and also what you say and like what you focus on and, and what you want to impart. How do you know when it's working? I mean, when he, is it followers? Is it like getting you getting places published? When do you know? Like I this is, the, I'm telling the right story. This company spent millions of dollars doing brand studies. And they'll do things like sentiment analysis and Twitter followers and all that kind of stuff. I think you know when it's working. And I think you know when it's not. And it, it sounds like a pat answer and maybe Alex can help me refine it. But are you working in the right job? Is that fulfilling? Do you feel like you're connecting well with people? Are you spending your time on activities that you enjoy? Do you feel like your expertise is valued? To me, it's like... Are you working on something that you think is important that's larger than just yourself? And do you feel like you play a meaningful role in it? If you keep running into trouble or if you keep not interacting well with people, then yes, then I think it's time to revisit it and go like, okay, what's, what's not working here? I actually wrote down three things off of mine that I wanted to use as a temperature check, which I keep looking at. So you, would have, you could have your own version of this, but mine was, uh, am I growing and developing? So actually, one of the reasons I took this job is at first I was like, no, thanks. And this was like pre-lean lean in territory. And I was like, I can't. I just had my third kid as a surprise. Like, oh, my God. And then running a company, I don't think so. I've never been trained for that. And then I was like, no, this is this matches growth and development. I'm going to push myself. I'm going to throw up probably every day. But that's OK. I cried a lot and like did sit almost fire with, with curtains a lot. <laughs> totally true for the first year. And But I'm over it now. Growth and development was one. Adding value was a big one because that is, are you? And I have two versions of that, which is, am I able to do what I do best at the job I'm in? Am I bringing everything? Am I able, are they accepting what I'm giving, basically? And that was also the personal part. And I actually think I'm successful because it's all of me and that whole brand platform page. <laughs> and then the last one is just the fun. It is my thing that you may have another one. But for me, I think I've at almost 48 just been like, you know what? I am not working with people even on your crappiest day. I was going to say shittiest, but I'm trying to work on <laughs> on your crappiest day that you can't have a little bit of a laugh or be like, what the F is happening, you know, or whatever, you know, and I, you just have to have that. So um, that's my thing. So you will have your own things, but I think that's another way of, of thinking about it in mm -hmm. the frame that you, you ask. So what if you mess up on a less happy note? What if you put something out there and then you're like, whoops, that's totally doesn't feel like me or you get a bad reaction? What then? You have oh, a famous good. phrase, never waste a 
<laughs> yes, never waste a crisis. It's, 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 it's my way of coping. So there's a company version and there's person. If you mess up, right? Like, what, what do you, how, how do you handle yourself, right? What do you do? Because th- there are no secrets. We all know this, right? In theory, we all know this. And then we try to forget it when it applies to us. But there are no secrets, particularly not if you've tweeted something. <laughs> it's just like, own it. Own it and move on. Just own it. Interestingly enough, with the PwC thing from the Oscars, mm-hmm. right? And I've yes. all the coverage was they are taking it on the chin big time. The chairman actually came out and quoted about it. I always appreciate, and I'm sure you do as just a regular consumer, think of brands that have messed up, whether it's a food brand and something happened or, you know, just saying we did this, we're sorry, here's what we're going to do to fix it, right? I always tell them. And then actually do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you probably already tell your kids that, like, just own it and say you made the mistake and you're not going to get as much trouble if you'd make eight lies and make me hunt you down. The thing about the human condition, we want to forgive. We just want to feel heard. Mm-hmm. We want to feel heard, and then we're ready to forgive. But if you're lying to us, Trust, like, you cannot get that. Then we get very needly and obsessed and whatnot. So, in your own experience and building your own, you know, personal brand, what do you felt like was the hardest, or what was the most challenging for you? I would say the hardest and most rewarding it was um, coming out here and not knowing anybody. I mean, mm-hmm. my whole network was a completely different network, and I moved here much like I think you guys are. And that was just hard because it was sort of this blank slate of like, nobody knows me. So that's kind of awesome. <laughs> and what do I want to be? Mm-hmm. So starting over, I think, and, and, and making that transition, I think can be very challenging, but incredibly rewarding. Mm-hmm. You just have to be patient. And I, the best times coming out of that, I was just extremely thoughtful. Mm-hmm. And I've never made um, a quote unquote mistake in my career yet so far of landing. I did a lot of due diligence. I really thought about you know, what kind of company do I want to work for? What's the, what brand, you know, is it like, how will my story, I'm I'm not a planner, so I'm not a, my five-year plan and my 10-year plan and I'm going to be this and I'm definitely not going to run for president in 2034 and holy hell, you know, but I do think I've been along the way to, to sort of combat that Mm -hmm. scaredness about it. Just trying to be really thoughtful and not rushing Mm -hmm. a decision or not rushing into it, not looking at a whole company or not looking at, the people that I'm going to be working with Mm -hmm. and the kind of work and can I be successful? So mine was um, when I was uh, running Outcast, we sort of had made a decision. It is going to be all about the clients and we are not going to be out there and vocal. Maybe that was my excuse for not doing anything. But like my, my belief was you don't ever want to be in the news and have your client going like, what is she spending her time on while I'm paying? Right. I just didn't sit right. So I kept a very low profile. I, I basically did nothing. And then when I joined here, Mark essentially sort of challenged me. He didn't force me. He said like, I would highly encourage you. He's very convincing. He's <laughs> highly encourage you to like up your brand profile a little bit. And that was really weird. Like, and it was so ironic, right? I'm sitting here, it's going like, you should work on your brand. And here I am hiding in a corner, right? So he caught me on it. And it was really uh, difficult at first. So I did things that were comfortable. I did dinners. I did dinners with reporters. And like, th- somebody wrote a story on me out of that, which we didn't, like, we didn't work on that. It just kind of happened, it sort of happened organically. And then I always have like my happy home place, Germany. The Germans like want to talk to me all the time because there's so few <laughs> Germans in Silicon Valley and there's all this tech tourism happening now. So if I want like an easy win, I just go talk to the Germans. <laughs> I was like, all right, fine. But like that's that's why I was saying like find where you're comfortable, right? And so and work your way into it. And it doesn't have to be pressed, as Alex was saying. Find your way where you're comfortable and kind of worm your way into it. That's a great note to end on. And we'll take some questions if anybody has. Ask away. Thank you very much um, for being with us this morning. Most of us were transitioning out of the military, right? And so we're in this space of somewhat recreating ourselves, trying to, you know, downplay, even though we're proud of our achievements in the military, you're trying to connect the dots where people see you being in a executive space or being in the tech industry. So while we're transitioning, is all the advice you gave the same? And then, or or also maybe when you get more specific of where you specifically a company or industry that you want to go into, do you, how do you shift? How is that brand shifting happening? And can you do this by yourself, or or is it something that you'd actually need to hire someone? You can definitely do it by yourself. I think the interesting thing is on the stories, it's what translates. It's what is the the activities and the work that you did in your military experience 
a lot of the leadership skills in general, without being very specific to what each company does and what you'll need to do in that company, finding those bridges of the work that you did and the kinds of teams that you ran and oversaw, project management, like take those very basic things that are core to any leader anywhere and map those for people just with your experience. Yeah, and I would say, I mean, you're going to laugh and, and rightfully so, but Silicon Valley thinks of itself as a place of disruption, which means it, those are uncertain environments that are wobbly. They can shift any second. And a company that's hot now is not tomorrow and whatnot. And it's full of people with engineering degrees, but not a lot of actual sort of real world experience. So what do you guys do? You guys go into uncertain environments and make stuff work basically out of nothing. So I think that's highly, highly applicable. And so you just need to find out the specifics of how you've led and explain those in plain English. But like we need so much of that because a lot of the the folks here, they are running large companies, but like they've, they've never run a thing. They're out of a dorm into their new dorm with kombucha. And massage tables. <laughs> it's a little mind-boggling. So someone like you coming in there is like, all right, people, here is how we're going to go is a thing of beauty. And I think that that should be highly, highly transferable and desired. Thanks for both your time. The idea of who you are is much more multifaceted than this. Just this is my brand. This is what I want to be seen for. Like it can be situationally dependent. It can change on your life circumstances and it can and come, you know, I may need to be a jerk in this situation and that's who I have to be in. In this situation, I'm not. How do you encompass all of that authentically into, into one brand without having to like hide this side of yourself? Well, look, the brand is not trying to prescribe every detailed behavior in every situation. But I think, you know, having to be a jerk in a situation, that's just sort of adjusting your management style, right? But I think if you have three or four, three, we like three, brand adjectives, it gives you a well-rounded body of like the essence of who you are. It doesn't describe every behavior. And it's also not static. I mean, if you looked at me funny when I was a teenager, I would be blushing and I rarely spoke. And I can speak now, <laughs> even in a different language. Well, go, go look at that. So it's, it's not as static as I think we might have made it sound. I'm finding that it's okay to be associated with a startup that fails. It's actually positive for a lot of people, but it's very negative, it seems, to be associated with a stolid, old-fashioned company who may be successful. But if you go there in your career, you're, you're quickly known as one of those guys. Not good <laughs> enough to make it at a you know, I, high growth. Is that I, a real concern well, when I or is that something to, uh, that we should I think it, when I, I so lived this, this is literally where <laughs> I came here. I got to, yeah, my first job since moving here was with Wired Magazine. So that was sort of my first kind of couple of years, which was great. And I got to learn the space. Then I got to Outcast and it was like my GE-ness because we worked on startups and we're like, oh, oh, like that is how embarrassing for you, basically. <laughs> and I think that was part of my year of feeling horrible, like all the stuff I learned. And then I realized, you know what? All of the stuff I learned through osmosis, through being in boardrooms, through just my experience traveling around the world is actually bigger. So it, I had to sort of move from feeling really bad about myself about it, right? And that it was a, it was an albatross. And I have to say, I over-rotated a little bit in the beginning. I tried to bring like too much project management or think or too much process to the company, I think in the beginning. And then I found my way you know, by, by, by people saying like, this seems too much. Right. So I learned also a lot of like, not necessarily my way was always the right way. So learning to be flexible, like a startup, I think was hugely valuable, but you, you will get that. A lot of startups don't have that experience of how, how to run, you know, a big company. And that is actually what they all aspire to. So it's sort of ironic. I think there's the chatter. Yeah. And then there's like, we, you know, we have an executive talent team. When a startup gets certain, a level of momentum, they actually do want someone who has sold to big customers before or who has worked in a big security department before or what, like they do do that there's like the what's cool and there's like Forbes does a list of like the 30 under 30 and the 20 under 20 and like nobody does the 60 under 60 <laughs> right but like you do you know I think in the real world once companies get to a certain scale they actually do want the experience and they do want sort of the big companyness but I do think you'll pick up when you're uh, interviewing or talking to these companies you easily can pick pick that up I think there are some founders who aren't very good at the this is the way I did it at Microsoft and the, and you can you can feel it very quickly they're, they're not interested and then it's just you know 
Fine, mm-hmm. good to know, or not your place, or maybe that is your place because you don't want to be like Microsoft. Yeah. One more, maybe? Hi, thank you so much for your candor, by the way. It's very refreshing. <laughs> we only have one verse. It's the yeah. brand work. <laughs> so we've had a lot of feedback on translating military skills into civilian skill sets and things like that. And really what that boils down to is branding in a way. And one of the things that I think is pretty universal throughout the military is the ability to be, you know, an athlete and do a ton of things Mm -hmm. all at the same time. Mm -hmm. I think the problem with that, with our personal branding efforts, is how do you portray the fact that, hey, I have a lot of different skill sets without coming across as contradictory. I think my concern is just that if we do brand ourselves as this athlete that can come in and Um, do a lot of things. It'll come across as we're sort of a jack of all trades and a master of none. Mm -hmm. And you did kind of touch on it, but um, how do we keep from being, I guess, pigeonholed Mm -hmm. um, into like the standard military? Oh, you're a military member, so you need to do this specific thing and and kind of- Would you say that you can, you were wide and deep though? Yeah. That's how, that's how I would- phrase it, okay. right? That you can go wide, like wherever you're going to go, you're going to be successful mm-hmm. because you know how to go deep. And then think of it, exa- maybe, you know, two examples where you, where you did that. Like we say that all the time, even what we do, like our portfolio companies we work with is everything from Patagonia to Amazon to Airbnb and the microbio company, right? So when they came to us, they were like, well, do you have life sciences? And we're like, no, but we know we know, what, know we that. know what to we do. Know right. We'll learn really quickly on life sciences. Like we get up to speed. We know so many industries, but then we go deep, you know, once we get, so we know what, there's a way to get smart and then we can go deep, but we are not. And then we own it, by the way, we say, we're not a life sciences agency. If that's what you want, we can make recommendations for you, but I can't pretend to be something I'm not. And then usually they're like, Ooh, or they're like, thanks. We'll be moving on. Like, okay, bye. <laughs> so, so you just, that's okay. Like I would rather say that than be like, yes, we can do that for you. And then you get in there and you're like, Shit, like there's no way I can do that. Right. Or public policy. There's so one. much winging it. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.